Hi guys, welcome to another mass tutorial brought to you by Direct Tutoring. Today we're going to have a look at a introduction to trig graphs. So if we take a quick overview, there are three types of trig graphs and they are sine, cos and tan. Now in the National 5 course you will only ever be asked to solve sine and cos graphs. You'll never be asked to draw tan graphs. However, before we learn to manipulate these graphs, we must be able to draw the standard graphs because the standard graphs are the thing that we are going to use as our basis. And then within the course, we will, as I say, we'll only be able to manipulate the sine and the cos graphs. And there are several different manipulations that you can do, either individually or a combination, which can affect both the x and y axis, depending on how the equation is structured. So this is a, a typical sine graph, um, which has a characteristic S shape. So it starts from the origin, starts from zero, goes up to one, and comes down all the way to minus one, cutting through the point 180 degrees, then returning up to 360. Now, these trig graphs are always for one revolution within 360 degrees. So when this goes again, we begin a new sine graph. So the key characteristics that we need to know are the turning points and the x and y axis, the starting position, the points of intersection on the x axis, and the minimum turning point as well. And then the cost graph looks like a V shape, or if you turn that on its side, it looks like a, a C. But instead of starting at zero, this one is going to start at one. So we begin at zero, one, and it comes down, it cuts the x axis at 90 degrees, one turning point at 180 degrees, and at minus one, cuts again at 270, and will end at 360. So the start point and the end point should share the same y value. So you can see that it starts at 1, it finishes at 1. The sine graph here starts at 0, it finishes at 0. So these are the standard graphs that we're going to have to use. Now we'll use the sine graph as an example and we'll define the main features of the graph. So just as before, this is y equals sine x. Now, the first thing that we need to know is something called the amplitude. Now, the amplitude is defined as the height of the turning point relative to its starting position. So, the amplitude is basically the distance from the starting point, which here is zero, and the maximum and minimum turning points, which will be at one and minus one. So, the amplitude is basically how stretched can it be? And it can either be stretched or it can be compressed. And when we solve this, a value at the beginning of the either the sine or the cos equation, a value here indicates that it is going to either stretch or compress the amplitude. So that's going to have effect on the turning point. The next one that we need to know is something called the period. Now the period this time is regarding the number of revolutions within 360 degrees. So a standard graph, y equals sine x, has a period of one because there is one revolution within 360 degrees. So it can, just like the amplitude, it can be increased or decreased. We can compress it or um, expand it depending on the information that we've been given. And a value that's multiplying the x, so the last one to affect the amplitude, the a was here. This time, if we have a value multiplying the x, that will tell us how many revolutions we have within 360 degrees. So if we put this into practice, we'll have a look at question one. It asks us to draw the graph of y equals three sine x. So what I always do is, before I start any question, I'll always draw the standard graph. 
So in this case, we're talking about sine graph. Let's draw the standard y equals sine x. And we use that as the basis for comparison. So most important, or one of the key things, is that we label our axis, so x, y, and then 0 in the origin. And then the normal turning points would be at 1 and minus 1, which corresponds to this graph. That's normally where it would go. However, the 3, as we've seen before, that affects the amplitude. Now, the amplitude is the height of the turning points relative to the starting position. So if we have a value of 3, that means it doesn't go to 1 and minus 1, it will go to 3 and minus 3. So it doesn't affect the number of revolutions, it isn't going to affect the points that it cuts the x-axis, it is just going to affect the y-axis for the turning points. So the graph would look something like that. Now, it doesn't have to be a work of art. The key thing here is that you get the characteristic shape and that you label them in the correct place. So you put the correct degrees where it cuts the x-axis at the turning point and that it matches up with the corresponding y value. That is the most important thing that we need. And then the second question, we will draw a graph of y equals cos 2x. So again, the value that times is the x is now going to have a manipulation on the period. That is how many revolutions we have within 360 degrees. And just like before, we will draw the standard graph before we can then construct y equals cos 2x. We need to know what y equals cos x is. So same thing as before, we will label our graph. However, this time, we, instead of having one complete revolution within 360 degrees, this two here indicates that we will have two revolutions. So whatever number this is, that is how many revolutions you're going to have within 360 degrees. So all these values, the key values, and the x direction only will be halved because we're going to have to squeeze two of these into 360 degrees. So your graph will look something like this. So the it would cut the x-axis first at 90 degrees. However, we now need to divide this by 2 because it will then cut here at this point is 45 degrees. And the turning point, which should normally be at 180, is now at 90. Because here, at 180 degrees, we need to have a full revolution because half of 360 is 180. So we start at 1 because we've not affected the amplitude and we haven't affected the starting position. So starts at 1 and comes all the way down, turns at 90 this time, up again, and then it will finish at 180 and 1. And that means we can then do it again for the 360 degrees. And these values here are just halved. So 90 degrees would be 45, 180 is 90, and so on. And then you just add it on on this side as well. Again, it doesn't have to be a work of art. It just has to go through the characteristic points. And so long as you label them, you will get full marks in the exam. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Leave any comments in the comment section below. I will include the link in the description for harder trig graphs um, which will cover more in-depth manipulations than these two here and we will see you in the next video